Hey everyone, we're back with another review today. Uh, this time we have the new Matrix X36C. Uh, this is basically just, you know, a standard G36C in a nicer, uh, different color, or a foliage green. You don't really see this a lot in G36s. Uh, it's really a unique looking gun. Um, and, you know, for what you pay for it, $140 what it was on Evite, I was actually fairly surprised with it. Um, I usually stay away from the custom guns and airsoft. You know, you have like, you know, the airsoft GI G4 lineup, and then you have all the Evite custom stuff. I usually tend to stay away from that stuff just because um, it just doesn't suit to me really, and I would just rather do it myself. But I tend to stay away from those guns, but this gun especially caught my eye because it's a G36C. I love that gun right off the bat, and it's in a nice, cool foliage green color, not in a matte black, so it definitely looks different right off the spot. And uh, when I was using it in some games in the past week, it uh, definitely uh, worked very well. Uh, so with that, let's get right into this review. Alright, so let's uh, quickly go over what you're going to get with the Matrix X36C. Um, a nice thing about this gun is it does come with an all-metal black flash hider to replace the orange uh, flash hider that was on here. And this one is correct, it is of the uh, G36 style and it makes the gun look very nice. I have replaced mine though, but it does come with this. It also comes with one magazine. Now the nice thing about this magazine was A, it fed very well, um, B, it stuck in the mag well very nicely, and another thing too is it's a lot clearer than most other G36 magazines. As you can see, it's somewhat transparent. On um, this, this is a different magazine as you can see. It's not as clear, so it is kind of nice or a con to some people. I like it because it lets me see how much ammo I have left. And last but not least, you're going to get the uh, little manual here. You see anything funny about that? Alright, so starting with the stock of the gun, uh, it's pretty much the same to any other G36C or G36 style stocks out there. It's the Tokyo Mirai design. One thing that wasn't so nice about the stock was there was a, you know, a noticeable seam line on top of it running. Uh, it wasn't as bad as some guns, that guns I've seen, but it was pretty noticeable. Uh, and another thing was the butt plate, or the butt pad, uh, is really loose. And it actually came off during a game I had, and I was lucky enough to find it. But it did come off, so I wasn't really too thrilled about that either. Uh, just put some glue on there, I mean, it's really not that hard. But other than that, it's pretty much the same as any other style stock. It does fold to the right, so you just press the button. Uh, one thing I did notice though, when you're trying to push it back into place, it wouldn't really go, you actually had to push the button, so uh, pro or con there. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it's the same standard design. Alright, now moving on to the main body of the gun, one thing that I really liked about it was when you pick it up and hold this gun, uh, it feels a lot different than most G36s because it is made of a different kind of plastic. Uh, if you've ever held Magpul products or held a, you know, a Magpul ACR or you know, an ANK ACR, it, it feels somewhat like that. It's definitely not the same, but it's similar in a sense. Uh, the selector switch on this gun functions pretty nicely, goes into place very well. I didn't find any hookups when you were shooting on semi-auto, it didn't lock up or anything. Uh, the sling point is in the back. Uh, one thing I noticed that was different about this gun was instead of a rear body pin, it's actually two uh, screws on each side, and you have to unscrew those, and then that will release it as the body pin would. Another thing regarding the body pins was they weren't too good of quality. The front one was alright, it held the pin into place, uh, but the, the Magwell one was really loose and it just came out like just from picking it up, and I replaced that one right away with a better one. But the, the uh, body pins weren't too good on this gun, I would say. Uh, the trigger, uh, standard, everything there. Uh, it does have the mock little uh, bolt release on it, which is non functioning. Uh, you can also see up here you have the back sight and rail, which we'll get onto after I show you the other side. Alright, so on the other side of the main body, nothing too much different. You got your selector switch and your stock hook. Um, let's move on up to the uh, charging handle assembly. You can pull it back, it's pretty stiff, it does reveal your hop up. Uh, one thing I did notice about the hop up was. It was alright, but you did have to turn it up quite a ways to get the performance you wanted, even with like a .25. So I might want to replace something in there, but it worked fine for me when I was using it. When you release it, it does sound kind of nice too. Uh, one thing that also I liked too was the, uh, the inside bolt here. It was actually kind of like a metal. You can hear that. So, I don't know, kind of a design improvement, I don't know. Uh, the rail up here is in deep plastic, 20 millimeters. It accepts most everything, as you can see. I've mounted the uh, little EOTech sight on there. Uh, your front sight is removable. One thing I did notice was the body pin was a little bit loose. Um, 
you can actually push it out with a screwdriver. But um, it didn't fall out during games, so that's all right. Uh, other than that, you know, it's pretty much a standard design, just all in foliage green. All right, so onto the front end of the gun, you do have your hand guard uh, regarding the body pin. The body pin up here was all right, but it doesn't really click into place. It has a small little rubber washer near the back right here, and that's what kind of holds it into place, but I'll show you how I'll push it in. I mean, it, it feels kind of loose. It's held up so far, but I mean, it just feels kind of weak. Uh, you can push that pin out. This is where your battery is going to be housed. Just slide this right off. Uh, regarding the hand card, quick, uh, there's only one rail included. Kind of a disappointment, but well. So going on your battery space, as you can see, it's wired to a small type. Uh, this gun does not come with a battery, sadly, but most people have batteries laying around, or you can buy one. But the ideal one you're going to be able to fit in here is one like this, an 8.4 volt uh, brick style battery. That's what this battery department was designed for. Now you can also fit um, a 9.6 nunchuck, but you can't fit a 9.6 brick. I've tried, it just won't close. Uh, one thing I did notice too, which was kind of a con, was the actual wiring in the gun. It was fairly thin and it felt brittle, so I uh, might want to watch out for the wiring. might rip, might tear, something might go wrong there. Um, you know, but other than that, it's still a standard design. Uh, the front here is 14 millimeter counterclockwise, so you can install the uh, included uh, black flash hider. As you can see, I have my own one on here. All right, guys, so the final thoughts on the Matrix Custom X36C. Now, the most defining feature about this gun is the external build quality. Now, it's not that it's, uh, you know, assembled differently from, you know, other G36s, but it's just the actual material they use is a lot different. Like I said, it feels very similar to Magpul products or just, you know, a Magpul ACR. It's, you know, very texturized, very lightweight, and very dense. You can tell that just from picking this gun up. Another thing is, just look at it. I mean, it's in foliage green. I mean, anyone that's playing in a woodland environment or outdoors environment, this gun's going to be your best friend because it's going to blend in perfectly. And another thing, too, is always accessories. You know, with guns with rails and, you know, guns with threads. You know, you can make it look really cool. Like with this one, I got an extended inner barrel, silencer, and a hollow sight on it. So, you know, guns like this, you can really personalize for your liking. And since it comes in a foliage green color, it's even more customizable. Um, but another thing, too, is the foliage green is really uh, acquired taste. Uh, when I took it to a game, um, yesterday, no, two days ago, I took it to a game, and a lot of people didn't like it because they were like, oh, that color doesn't look very nice, I mean, I thought it would be a little bit different. Uh, like I said, it's very acquired taste, and, you know, you just gotta get used to it. It's not something you, not something most people are gonna like. Uh, some people just like, you know, a matte black gun, or some people like two-tone guns like this one. Uh, but other than that, you know, pretty solid gun. $140 on e-bike, the only place you're gonna really be able to get this gun. Uh, you can get a version with 350 FPS, 400 FPS, which is what this one is. Uh, performs pretty decently. Uh, the internals are really solid. Uh, you know, the air compression is great. The gun sounds perfect. I mean, the shim drop was actually very nice, and I was very impressed with it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, $140. I mean, if you got the money and you want something that looks a little bit different, go for it. I mean, I bought it, and I'm definitely pleased with my purchase. So with that. This has been the review of the Matrix Custom X36C. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and get some more awesome, epic, airsoft reviews and gameplay videos. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.